Uh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. Um, for several weeks I've found myself sort of unable to uh, to follow what's happening in the Arctic. I just don't have the energy or the uh, uh, or the time of day. So I've been bowing to my friend Margot and relying on her for information. Quite honestly, uh, human affairs um, move um, much more quickly than um, even rapid climate change in the melting of the Arctic. So uh, that's what I've been concentrating on. So I just want to actually, I've watched uh, Margot's uh, weekly YouTube report and I just want to play around with a few things that bring out the points, the most salient points, uh, without having to go through the whole report. Um, so, but I, uh, I strongly suggest that uh, you do watch, watch the whole report uh, to get everything in the proper context. I'm just bringing out certain uh, salient points. Okay. So let's uh, start off with what the uh, National Snow and Ice Data Center has to say. Uh, they're saying it's all recovering and very quickly and this is, um, yeah, that's all we need to know. And now let's look at what the reality is behind this chart. Uh, from Margot's report from yesterday. We can see the Bering Strait is still open in a lot of this area uh, where the Pacific comes into the Arctic is still open. The, we've got a big huge area in the Laptev Sea that is still open. Here's the Kara Sea. It's coming back around the coastline of all, all these areas, but it's still open um, a long way around Severn, I mean, Novaya Zemlya up to Severnaya Zemlya, um, and then all of the Barents Sea is open, and Svalbard is still ice free, Franz Josef Land is still ice free, and what you're going to see. When we look at climate, re I mean, uh, NASA worldview is, it was, it was coming back out towards Svalbard, and then the last few days there's been a retreat, and this sea ice here north of Greenland and through this Fram Strait is breaking up. It's having a hard time on the refreeze, so that's kind of got me worried. So let's go through where we were, what we, what has happened this week. So here it is from Sunday of last week when I did my report. So here it was on November 1st. So I'm just going to click through and you can see the changes day by day. Here's the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth. Now you can see that retreat coming back. See if we do it. Let's go through that again. That was good. Because um, I was watching up here on the refreeze, but I'm going to watch down here on this right hand side. So, <clears throat> and where it's refreezing, it's very thin. It's quite, quite thin. So here we go. Here's the first, here's the second, third. Okay, it started retreating here. Now watch here. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. So as it's growing back up here by Russia, it's decreasing here on this, I'd call it the eastern side of the North Pole. The North Pole is right here. So this is Quadrant 2. Quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4 is how I've named them. 
So we've got a retreat going on here in quadrant two. Chicago shows um, quite clearly that there's been a retreat of ice um, in what she calls quadrant four or east of um, uh, the North Pole. And um, as always, I think that the, uh, the Navy website uh, shows the reality of the situation and just how much of a, a refreeze uh, that we have. <clears throat> Here's the sea ice thickness for today. This is from the Navy website. So we can see where it's refrozen somewhat and it's still clear. We've got a little white fringe popping up by Novaya Zemlya um, and around the Yamal Peninsula and the purple that's very thin. That's probably, um, see it's this light purple down here. So it's half a meter or less just it's just coming back and then there are areas where it's not come back yet and that's because the sea surface temperature is just too warm for the sea ice to come back <clears throat> and we're seeing the aqua ribbon down here on this north coast of Greenland it's a little bit more solid here. We're getting a little bit more aqua coming back around Ellesmere Island and then the rest of this Canadian archipelago. Here's what's left of this thickest sea ice. It hasn't changed that much in the week um, and it hasn't shifted that much. I think it's anchored in here on on the archipelago but it, it's it, it hasn't changed that much. So, um, we'll just go through. I did a slideshow because the Navy website didn't update their animation. So, I made my own slideshow. So, I'm just going to click through and we'll see how this has changed this week. Here's the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. So let's run through that again. Here's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. So we saw the retreat here and then the little purple coming back here, but not much happening in on this thickest part. We're seeing a little bit more blue. Um, I guess it doesn't doesn't look that much different to me <clears throat> as far as the thickness right here. And here goes another view of uh, the polar ice from the point of view of uh, NASA world view. Here's the fifth now see it's really starting to break up here on the 5th. Here's the 6th. See we're getting yellows in here by the 6th. Here's the 7th. So it's not looking good by the 7th. And here's the 8th today. And it's retreating. So let's go back. Let's do that again. So it was more bowed out here and reaching uh, Franz Josef Land and it's trying to reach towards Svalbard. Now so this part is inching back and refreezing and here a little bit in the Kara Sea but this side on this east side it's it's just it's coming back in it's retreating so let's run through this again here was last Sunday, the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. 
So there we go. So we still have this hole here in the kerosene. Then this hole here. I mean, this is the, sorry, that's the lactev C here and here. And, um, then this problem area all from the North Pole East. It's really disturbing me. And it's just in the last couple of days. See? So it started on the 5th. Here's the 6th, 7th, and 8th. So, um, for whatever reason, that's, that's just not looking very good there. I'm going to, I'm going to turn on the night time. See if we can see, glean anything here. The night time layer. It might be too far past. We it only works to a certain point. Out now over here. See, it's not up to the coastline. This is, <coughs> I think that's Ellesmere. Yeah, let's look at yesterday. Okay, if you zoom in, you can see it's all broken up. See all of this? It's a lot of broken up stuff there. hard to see. Here is the sea ice. That's the thicker sea ice. Let's see what it is today. Here it is. Still seeing lots of long cracks. I can't see that that's frozen in between there. See, lots of long cracks still. So then she goes on to have a look at what is happening in the uh, in the Beaufort Sea. I've been watching this. This is um this is a different view of the this is the Beaufort Sea. This is from the Navy website. This is sea ice thickness. This is that thickest sea ice. And so here's a close up. Here's Alaska down here and there, here's Canada over here. Here's the Bering Strait. So this is the um Here's the Beaufort Geyer here. So here's what's left of this thickest sea ice and what it looks like today. And um, so we'll just click through to see what it's done this week. So here it was last Sunday. <clears throat> and I don't think much has changed, frankly. I think things have it's what you're going to see is mainly a thickening of this and just a little bit of shifting but not much so here we go on the first second 
third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. So it's just kind of sitting there and not much has really changed as far as the thickness here right on the coastline. It looks like we're getting a few more greens showing up. Um, along here which would be thicker than the aqua the green is three meters or the yeah that green is three meters the aqua is two to two and a half meters thick so let's run through that again here's the first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh and eighth so it looks about the same but last week when we looked at it that was uh, on the refreeze it's on the lowest on record and um, for this time of year and I looked a couple of days ago and we were still low so here it is today I will turn on the blue marble view so we can just concentrate on the ice so what we're looking at this is sea ice concentration and um, we want solid white that's what we want <clears throat> and we've got that over here where it's on the recent refreeze but it's not very thick but it's more solid because it's it's um it's thin ice and it just refroze and it's not pieces of ice that have broken apart and there you know there's a lot of space in between and things like that so what we've got down here is um this looks like it's breaking apart to me because when you go <coughs> When you look at this chart, sea ice concentration, this is at 70%, 65% on the green. Um, that's 62% concentration. And um, it's it was more concentrated and so it's breaking up <clears throat> they've been having storms up there so what I want to do is we'll just go back we'll go back to the first <clears throat> so here's where we are we're last Sunday So we're seeing on last Sunday, it was a lot more concentrated. We still had a little red over here on this right side. But up here in quadrant two, it was just light pink. So showing it's more concentrated. Now here's the North Pole. Here's Greenland. There's Russia up here. So we're just going to click through and see what's happened this week there's the second here are the maximum temperatures today we're seeing colder air over Greenland and over parts of the Arctic but we still have a lot of warmer air air that's warmer than normal reds and browns this red is up to 20 C higher than normal also here in Alaska and Canada and over most of Russia it looks like and now we um, we turn to uh, to methane Okay, I just want to look at methane uh, for a moment. Um, this is how things looked back uh, when I was 
looking at this back at the end of um, of August, and you can see there's huge amounts of methane coming up. Um, and now it's just turned into a sea of green. Uh, so I came across this uh, tweet uh, from someone on uh, Chris Cartwright on uh, Twitter, and he said, check the, the four last methane maps. The color ledger is different every day. So I'm just going to go through all the ones that he's uh, presented. So uh, that's the uh, 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 the fifth of um, of November, and uh, so you have a look at the uh, uh, the colour. Pay close attention to the colour ledger. I can't because I've got something sitting in front of it on my screen. And then by the sixth. Um, yeah, see where he's circled, see the changes in the color ledger, and you've just got this tiny little area here of uh, of of red where it, it, it's obviously coming out, coming out, and then that's on the on the seventh. So he's circled the things that he wants to to show. Uh, and the eighth, so he's pointing again to the color ledger. So they keep on changing it seemingly. Uh, I've seen them do this before. They've done this to uh, create an impression, uh, but some of us can see through it. And now let's just see what uh uh, Margo has to report on this. So here's the spreadsheet and chart that we've been tracking this on. Here is the data for the 7th. Here are all the means that I just called off, added up and divided by 4, and we come up with an average of 1898.25 parts per billion. Now last week we saw it end up at 1898.75 and so it's only a slight decrease of 0.5 parts per billion. So here we are, just it just barely went down this week. So we think that it peaked out twice. So here's where it left off on Friday. We're seeing these higher readings in northern Russia, and they're coming out in the Kara Sea here, and oh, just moving out, just just like waves of methane coming up from from the uh, from the surface and from through the ocean and through the ice, and we're still seeing a lot of green. Now that dark green that you're seeing here over most of Greenland is, um, that's 1920 parts per billion. And then as you go to the right on this chart, um, it increases until finally this dark reddish brown is a range of 2160 to 10,000 parts per billion. So let's run this. The data is for Saturday and the forecast is for Sunday through Wednesday. And we're still seeing it bubble up here by Severnaya Zemlya. Well, it calms down in the forecast period, but once it starts over, like Saturday, that's been bubbling up all week. Sunday, it's still going, and then by Monday, it's calming down. 
um, but that's kind of a constant area since January. See these lighter colors of green move out and um, the Arctic is having a hard time refreezing. It's in, it's in no man's land. It's just, you know, we just have to keep observing and seeing what it's going to do. Got some higher readings here in Russia still. Now this eastern seaboard of the U.S. is just really, really ballooning. Europe, Europe is filling back up. Now you can see it. Look, this wave coming up from the UK. Watch this stream up here. And there's another wave. So there are areas, even though methane is going down overall, uh, there are areas that are still quite high. So, in conclusion, I'm relying on um, on Margo for my information of what's happening in the Arctic. Um, I don't just don't have the energy to put into primary research, but the impression that I'm getting is that we're just swimming in a a sea of lies. Um, the Guardian came up with a very good article. Uh, con with confirmation from uh, the expedition of Igor Semelyatov um, of the methane coming out of the uh, of the Arctic, uh, and then this was immediately uh, kind of subject to um, correction or fact checking uh, from social media and a lot of the usual. Suspects in the scientific community, Michael Mann, Gavin Schmidt, etc., come out and says that it's it, it, it's it's fake. Uh, so, and then um, I've just been, uh, I think I've been blocked by uh, Zach Labe, who I've been very very disappointed with. Uh, I liked his charts and things, uh, just for making a a very polite comment with a corrective to what he was saying and I just don't think that any of these people uh, want to see it and uh, the motivation whether it's just pure psychology or whether there's something uh, deeper and darker to it I really don't know um, because I'm just comparing that with all the other kind of uh, narratives and uh, that we're being exposed to. Uh, we're just getting uh, the Great Reset right up to here. Uh, you know, this great new, brave new world future that we've got to look forward to. And uh, it's my suspicion that the whole narrative around climate change um, revolves not so much around what is actually happening but around this agenda, and of course, we have everything else, uh, an unbelievable spectacle around the US election, there's obvious um, uh, voter fraud, uh, I mean, you have to be kind of some sort of totally blind, or worse, uh, uh, not to see it. Um, so, these are very, very... Uh, troubling times. Anyway, uh, that's it from me. Uh, Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.